Sponsored by Budweiser, as always. Is your brother still working for Bud? Is he yes. Still in town? He's not in town anymore. Now he's in Hong Kong. Oh. Hootie tootie for tootie. Yeah. He is... <laughs> he is in Hong Kong. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's, it's going well. Doo -ba -doo -ba -doo. We should be good. Teferi didn't come out this year. Let's talk about our miscast. Oh, yeah, let's draw off of that. Hello! How are we doing today? Good. It's exciting to be back in the booth, uh, getting ready to talk about 2021 in the world of vintage rotisserie draft. Yeah, so an interesting year when I was looking through for my review. Uh, you know, I, not as much as I expected prior to Modern Horizons, but uh, obviously Modern Horizons, uh, yeah. quite, quite a bit of power there. But there is some interesting stuff for sure prior to that. And I'm sure, as always, there's going to be some things that we overlook or I overlook, and one of those... That couldn't that, happen. Oh, never. I'm, I'm a genius at this game. What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm like next level. I'm a level two judge. Come on. Uh, but uh, our longtime uh, fan and fellow VRD enthusiast, Hyphenated, pointed out to us that they had one picked up in their last draft that mm -hmm. we missed that is uh, really good. <laughs> yeah. Miscast is absolutely going to see play. In fact, yeah. already has seen play. Uh, I think we're going to do one more of these where we actually go over their draft and try to like do some analysis on it. Yeah, do some breakdown of uh, some draft instead of just talking about cards. So exactly. Look at, look at uh, some of the shells, some of the formats, some of the things that are common, and you know, then, of course, some of the ones that might pop up. You know, Maybe, maybe, maybe the Enchantress cards from Modern Horizon are going to finally push Enchantress over. It's not. I think, no, we'll see. If Jeff Blyden is in the format, it very well might. Uh, he, uh, he's been rocking Enchantress at pre-modern. Okay. I was able to, uh, able to pick up a win against him the yeah. other day. And yeah, he's definitely making, making a play with that deck. Okay. But, so, I, we have, I don't think in any of the VRDs I've seen an Enchantress list yet. I've seen no. a lot of artifact lists, but, uh, I think, you, I think you're right. This card is definitely going to see, have more, more chance of it though. Yeah. Uh, miscast. So this is, what kind of analogs do we have for this card? Uh, I mean, I th you know, any of the uh, mystic, Mystical Dispute, I think, is probably the closest. Mana Lake, which has seen play. Uh, mystical Dispute, which got drafted last time, um, which is a little more limited in that it um, focuses more on blue. Uh, mm -hmm. but, but it can hit creatures. Right. It's a big deal. It also, I mean, not being able to hit walkers is a pretty big deal for Miscast. Obviously, yeah. if you have a pretty blue metagame, it'll be very good. Uh, is Disrupt, is that, is that the card I'm thinking of? That, yes. Uh, the classic? And all of these have seen play. So, yes. I mean, um, you know, I've, Days sees play. I mean, obviously that has the ability, the extra little add-on. Yeah. Does. I mean, I think I like Disrupt more than more than Miscast, but they're both fantastic and will do great. So, yeah, definitely yeah. definitely a big oversight on our part, but one that uh, one that we'll, we'll see and see how far it actually ends up going. Come on, I don't cast blue spells. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me neither. Me neither. Uh, so this time, what what, are, what what sets even came out in 2021? All right, so we had we started off 2021 with Kaldheim. Uh huh. Um, so our little trip into Viking lore, right? Uh huh. And then we had uh, Time Spar remastered, which doesn't actually do anything for us. Those are all already in the everything's format. a reprint. Yep. Right. Uh, and then Strixhaven, uh, our uh, you know English magic school set. Uh, yes. So to speak. And, and then totally if, unaffiliated with any popular right. book series. Oh, actually, I read some really good tweets that talked about how like it's very American to overfocus on Harry Potter for that because oh, really? like the the type of that type of school book series or that type of school series and idea is much more common in England. So like this idea that this is just a Harry Potter is you know was like they're saying this is very off if you are English at all. Where this type of you know idea is a much more common idea. You know. Interesting. Yeah, I had no idea. Huh. How about that? Um, and then the, the big one is going to be that uh, we have Commander decks for, for Strixhaven mm -hmm. as well and Kaldheim. Uh, C C Strixhaven actually had real Commander decks with lots of preprints, where Kaldheim had those Zendikar style Commander decks that only had like basically three the three new Commanders that were re I gotcha. were, were new and everything else was reprints. That makes sense. Um, and then of course MH two, and then the upcoming That's a big one. Um, which we did, I, spoilers have only barely started. Um, they have officially start mid this week. Oh, which is Forgotten Realms, which yes. will be available. The D&D um, &D crossover, it's going to be so good. I cannot wait for that set. Yeah, and then we know one card from there um, that I think will have a po very possible impact, um, which is Tasha's Hideous Laughter, mm -hmm. uh, which is two blue and one. Uh, let's see, does it come up yet? Let's see if, uh, if they'll have it here. Yeah. 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 
How about that? Uh, so two blue and one. Each op- uh, opponent exiles cards from the top of the library until that player exiles out of cost with 20 mana value or more. That's a lot of cards. That's a lot of cards in VRD. So do we know the release date of Tasha's Hideous Laughter yet? Yeah, that's mid-July. Mid-July. Exciting. Yeah, so okay. uh, they start spoiler season coming up, so it's mid to late. It is before. It is in July for sure. Yep. So uh, there's some other pretty cool cards that they've spoiled so far, but nothing that I that just jumped out at me as being mm-hmm. necessarily playable um, in the format. But um, you know, we assuredly might see a few things from there. And I think this, again, I've been harping on the possibility of a mill deck. Um, right. And cards like this, that's just a lot of cards. <laughs> I, mean, I, I yeah, I mean, we'll we'll see. I, we haven't seen it tried in any of our particular yeah. ones we have seen it tried in other vintage history drafts though so right. it's certainly a, a a deck that has legs um and this yeah. seems really strong if it resolves and I, th- I think that the right way is just you're just very much going to be a, a heavy control shell and you're just going to mean all you gotta do is mill 40 so. i mean i don't even know if you need the control shell i think yeah. i think there's enough cards in the form at this point they can't play counter aggro. all of these <laughs> right yeah, <laughs> i'm just, just gonna windmill these cards until some resolve they can't counter them all so. exactly right i don't know we'll see it go either way i think but, yeah no absolutely because yeah this could be your win con by itself yeah. Yeah. If you're hard enough control deck. Yeah, like think about Bomberman, something right. like that. You know, that's, I mean, like Mystic Forge may be the top dog, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. a, four, a four drop may be the biggest spell in there. Um, but yeah, we, we, we won't cover, won't necessarily dive all the way into Forgotten Realms, um, but that, yeah. that is certainly one that's yeah. good to know so far. All right, so let's hit the first one. Let's hit those, uh, the Vikings, right? Let's hit Kaldheim. Um So this set was a cool set. Uh, I liked it a lot. I, I thought the, uh, uh, I liked the alt frames on it quite a bit. Uh, the first card from there uh, made a lot of waves in a lot of places until they updated <laughs> the rules. Yes. <laughs> uh, the card's still good. Uh, the card's still legitimately good. There still are ways to cheat it into play. I think prior to the Cascade update, this thing was a lock to be very disruptive because Tybalt, the other side, mm-hmm. is just such an unfair, such a hard card to beat, especially when you're doing it on something like turn two. Yes. Right. Uh, and so, you could still do it off Tybalt's trickery or something. Yeah, yeah there's still ways. There are, there are still ways. Um, but I, I think that even if I'm in a deck like, uh, you know, a disruption kind of reanimator, like I'm going to splash a little. I, I might draft Valky anyway just yep. for some hand hate that might be able to become a creature, slow them down, do some tempo plays, make them burn removal. And then if not, if later if the game goes long, mm-hmm. and I, I, I can cast it. Right. I mean, do remember that... Um, two or three, I don't remember how many VRDs ago, um, Elaine was casting multiple nickel boluses. Sure. Right? Like, yeah. and I mean, so in our game, it was the one that uh, I finished first, tied for first in, so several ago. Um, it, you know, we had a game where she resolved the backside of flip bolus. Well, right? and this this is the format, right? The format, either you lose the game on turn four or you lose the game on turn 24. Right. It's, it's, there's not a lot of games that end up in the yeah. middle there. So I, I would not be surprised if the backside got ca- cast hard cast at some point, too. Yep. Um, but I mean, otherwise, Bring to Light is the is the popular one right now. Right. Um, bring to Light works. So, uh, you know, yeah, I think this card, very, very reasonable. Uh, if it doesn't show up, I wouldn't be surprised. But if it, you know, shows up, I, I wouldn't definitely not be surprised either yeah i mean it, like i think in against most decks uh it's basically a brain maggot right you can take out not necessarily the card you want but you'll be able to get something um i could see velky sitting living in the sideboard for one of those like pakula style decks heavy creature matchups yeah exactly well, and then i'll tell you the other the other thing that's that's nice is even in the mid game right like i did this card a lot on arena i drafted this thing all the time and mm-hmm. i just splash a mountain just in case on a cube and but a lot of games i would just drop it like turn five i'd have some ramp i was often in green black i'd drop it turn five or six and then just immediately turn it into their elder gargadon right right and i mean so if it's against those green decks if you drop it and just turn it into something massive sure. um you know you're in a pretty good spot that seems fair yeah no I, this one this one seems like it's pretty likely not necessarily in the first vrd but at some point to see yeah play. someone will try it at some point yeah. So uh, speaking of uh, of Valky, right? Uh, what and other ways cards? Is. So Tybalt's trickery. Um, so this card I think is really interesting in VRD, right? And not just as a way to um, obviously a way to cheat. You can cheat Tybalt in the play off of Valky, um, but I think just as a way to either sometimes just targeting yourself and going for the shenanigans, upgrading. You know, so I counter. It's turn four or five. I draw uh, a mana rock. I don't need. I counter my own mana rock to roll it into something better, right? I'm a chaos warp mm-hmm. into something. Um, 
But I think even it just as a, this is a very silver bullet format, right? Like this is, there's a lot of two card combos. There's a lot of things that if they're going for that two card combo and I'm in a color that doesn't traditionally have a counter spell, this offers me that flex. I can get rid of my own badge stuff to get something better. Sure. But I can also just get rid of, yeah, you're going to get something and it may suck for me. It's a chance, <laughs> but you're not casting that grindstone that you're going to beat me with immediately. Fair. Right. I just stopped you from winning the game in red with, you know, with something that has flexibility beyond just artifact hate, right? So I think that... This seems like the, f the first half of that is the part that matters, and the second part will come up occasionally. I, I cannot see, like, a mono-red deck drafting this card as a counterspell. Right. But I could see a, you know, a, a multicolor Grixis deck dra drafting it, because you know, I, may, I may cascade into my Nickel Bolas. But, like, at that point, you're throwing away two cards? Uh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, that's it. I'm not convinced. It, it, it doesn't have to, but I think it's really intriguing. It's got flexibility, and I think flexibility is a really powerful, Agreed. powerful thing. I, I think this is if the front side does something broken, then it will see play, right. and you'll see lots of cool plays with it if it does. Right, it'd be very interesting. But we kind of need to see it needs to do something broken rather than just be a role player. Otherwise, there's so many better role players. True. So right. yeah, no, I, I like it though. Right. This one seems strong, maybe. Right. Next card's a role player. Um, and it's a sideboard role player, mm -hmm. but um, it is Sigrid. So, in a white, if I'm in a white, uh, you know, Taxus deck, I'm in a white black Dead Man's Ale. I bring this in against those elves or those, the, you know, the fewer of the heavier creature formats, mm -hmm. right? Uh, maybe even better, someone swinging with something big, um, like a big reanimator thing. The fact it's got slat, flash is extra nice. Um, it's an O-ring. O-ring type effects have seen play. Um, and, you know, it is limited by attacking or blocking, so that's why it's sideboard. Yep. But, you know, I, I, I could very easily see that in that. I think that's a good 45th type pick for a sideboard slot against a creature heavy deck. Yeah, I mean, we'll have to see it. John Ryan, who, by the way, is coming. Okay, uh, we'll, we'll see if uh, we'll see if he ends up taking this one, but I think that that's the deck that wants it. If, yeah, if it that's does. absolutely the deck that wants it. And there's the problem with picking removal in these things, right, is that there's so much of it. Yep. Like, there's just so much removal. So... This is a reach for sure, um, but I wouldn't be surprised. It would be like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Like this is a good like I want to attack. I want to attack back with dudes. Yeah, exactly. Like, this is against. This stops the Death and Taxes deck from just losing to a uh, Gargaroth or something. Right. Right. So right. this this is a way to stop that nonsense. So yeah, I, I can see it definitely yeah. out of the sideboard. Definitely in that one deck. Next one is my super reach of the whole thing. Right. Like this is the. I doubt this thing's not gonna see. This maybe. card will not see play. No, nope. maybe. <laughs> this is a, a strong this is a, no. This is a card that's just intrigued me since it got spoiled, right? It's, it's a cool card. It's a cool card. And I don't know. I think like Storm, right? Like I can just foretell a whole bunch of stuff and make it cheaper the next turn. And I don't know. It's a cool card. It's a maybe. This is just my throwing it out there. If any of our players are watching and you want to try something cool to impress me, you want to get invited onto the stream afterward where we tell you how awesome you are, maybe you draft this one. Um, yeah, it's just it. paying two mana to give it plus two plus zero oh, and then not be able to cast it for a turn. Like, yeah. Also, how often do you have more than two mana available? Never. I don't know. Yeah. So this is basically one of those cards that I look at and my brain goes, I want this to work in VRD. Same. Right? So I, I'm throwing it out there. It's a card that in the right shell could do some pretty interesting things. I think that shell would be making s m m that wheel deck I was talking about, or that uh, the wheel slash ball lightning deck, right? Like yes. making those cards cheaper and then casting a bunch of them in the same turn, right? I foretell a wheel, I foretell another wheel, and then the next turn I cast them each for one and cast a bunch of stuff. I don't know. It's, it's bad, but I'm throwing it, it out there bad. because I have to throw something stupid out there. Brandon points out that it does lose to your entire deck being milled. It does. That's insightful. So, uh, next on the list, Weathered Runestone. Yeah, this is just hate. I mean... <laughs> oh, God. That's so brutal. This turns yeah. off all the decks I want to play. This was the switch to where we started seeing cards that used to be rares be uncommons. Yeah. Right? Like, they were just like, you know, we're going to take those hate cards that we, that people play, those sideboard cards, and we're going to start making them uncommons. Um, every other variation of this card has been drafted at some point. Yep. There's enough variations of this card, it might not get drafted because you know it's going to be whether someone remembers it or not. And some of those are one mana, some of those are two. 
Um, this but, one's also just not particularly good. Like it's fine, but right. it's, it doesn't it it doesn't have the like storm can't win effect that right. a lot of those cards have. No, this one is strictly you know you can't cast spells. You, this is really but more reanimator mm -hmm. uh, hate than others. Reanimator um, oath. It turns oath. off it turns off a few of the decks. Yeah, st stops cards from your libraries as well. So, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it's. There's enough of this cards. It just does. It just could just get forgotten in mm -hmm. the wind, and no one drafts it. Um, if there's a run on this type of card, or someone's got a deck that's going to pull heavily, and people start getting scared. So what often happens in VRD is there is this moment where someone's got a deck, and then someone drafts a hate card, and around the table we all laugh about it, and then everyone makes a run on that similar hate card, right? Mm -hmm. Or you get the one thing like in VRD two where um, Eric drafts a. Uh, is that you? Oh, uh, dies to shatter. Okay. Yeah. I was like, are you talking about that? No, no. Uh, Brandon, where, Brandon points out that this okay. dies to shatter and therefore is unplayable. Right. Where Eric drafts a card and then I immediately draft the better version of that card <laughs> that he forgot about. Right? Yes. Uh, which was a uh, bitter, or, bitter ordeal. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So bitter ordeal is obviously the incredibly strong one and even better than the one that. Right. Yeah. So, uh, which is a bitter ordeal is also later drafted by Brandon as a, uh, a very Brandon card. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, so I, I think if there's a run on this type of effect, then this one might show up if people remember it. But yes. there's enough of these. But yeah, this is perfectly playable. Yep, I I, I agree. I don't have anything more to say. I think you're you're pretty spot on. Uh, pathways we talked about last time. Uh, Kaldheim finished the rest of them. Sure. So I still don't think they're great, but they're fine. Yeah, I, I, again, I mean, I th the analysis stands from last time, right? So if you missed the analysis last time, it's they're another of many many lands. And that they've got a decent flexibility um, to them. Mm -hmm. They're, they're bet worse than a straight up duel, um, but there are a lot of strange lands that have seen play, mm -hmm. and I, I don't see any reason why these wouldn't. Yep. Uh, particularly if you're just looking for a little fixing towards the end. I agree. Uh, and the same then goes for the next ones, which are the snow duels. Interesting. I don't know how to search for these. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> uh, so the snow duels are, uh, of course, they are just like regular duels, and that they have the nice ability to they have land types right that um, is huge so they can be tutored um they can be fetched so that is the biggest part uh of these yeah i mean so you're right they can be tutored but is it come into play tapped land that's tutorable worth it when you have the triumphs in the format right like it's okay so you have to care about snow and you have to care about yeah, no one's gonna care about snow right I, exactly I mean, no one's care about snow because our rule about you have to draft Snowlands basics yeah. individually. Mm -hmm. right? So if you don't know that, VRD fans, uh, Snow basics are not free. Uh, if you want Snow basics, you have to draft each one, right? So if you want five islands, you have to spend five slots on islands. Um, so yeah, the Triumphs are the obvious better, right? Because you can fetch them in, they're coming to play tap, but they're three. Mm -hmm. um, but if I'm not in Triumphs color, right? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. As I said, there, there's so many things out there. We have seen other comes into play tap lands drafted. I, I just... Lands at this point are almost a non-issue. You can get yourself fixed. It's just how will, how far, how far down the totem are you yes. willing to go? You know? It's just the format's so different than it was ten years ago, where you had to be scrambling for even just basic duels. Right. Like at this point, yeah, you you obviously want the fetch dual combo, but if you can't get it, there's plenty of other choices. The fetch lands just keep going up and up because of they're how unique they are, though. Yeah. So it's kind of the fetch lands go up and yeah, everything I mean, else goes down. The fetch lands are still the superior land, right? Yes. They should be. They hands down should be drafted ahead of even OG duels, um, because, you know, in my experience, most of the time, it's not necessarily having both, though sometimes it is, but it's not necessarily having both, but it's just having the colors when I want them, mm -hmm. and so I, I think the fetch lands are the, the top land in the format. Yeah, I mean, I think there's arguments where if you and another player are both exactly on the same two colors, and the fetch land for those two colors is gone, I think there's an argument for whether you take underground C or take an off-color fetch. Yeah, uh, but but yeah, that's that's about the only um, yeah. that's about the only time where I could see taking a duel over a fetch. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, but yeah, I, no, I think that's it for call time. So interesting. Uh, you know, I look through. I mean, there might be some things I missed, but I don't know. Nothing else. There's a lot of cool cards in there, but not, you know, a lot of them are pricey or very snow related, and nothing that jumped out at me as um, necessarily things I want to be doing. Sure. So. Yeah, it's kind of sad none of the gods ended up making a cut, but I understand it. Valky being the only one. Yeah. Uh, so here's one card that I think might, that's not on your list, but I didn't even, I didn't I, think to add it prior to this moment yeah, right here. Yeah, actually, funny enough, when you just said that, this is the one that popped in my head of, well, maybe her. Yeah. Um, 
she, she has a really uh, versatile. She has really versatile abilities, right? So her front side gets you mana in case you do want to go into the all spells deck or right. the storm deck of some kind, uh, just letting you continuously change. And I don't seeing her in modern is great. My brain does not think in storm terms, right? Sure. Like, like so that is a very you thing there, right? Uh, and then the backside covers the other problem with the deck. The problem. The deck is either constrained yeah. by mana or by cards. So That's if legit. you if you can't cover the mana, if you already have the mana side covered and it's turn six or whatever, you drop you drop the horn and all of a sudden you just draw six cards and that's pretty powerful and i'll tell you what I, i'm gonna actually agree and, and actually move this quite up my rankings here thinking about that because the other thing is this is going to be i'm uh you know the lead is no longer buried i think that the red deck is now yeah mh2 right. modern horizons 2 i think finally makes the red deck not just viable but scary ooh, ooh. um and this card you know will play in there so I haven't seen the results yet, but and we'll we'll talk about them next time. Right. But we'll definitely have to see whether uh, from the Discord whether that draft ended up how it went. Okay, because good. They had a they had a draft, uh, and I'm trying yeah, to, I didn't go look at the updates. I don't right. know who actually ended up taking doing it, but I know that. What is uh, our Discord again for those that are interested? It's on Saint Lotus. So if you go to Twitter, it's linked from there. I'll I'll link it in chat as well, though. Yeah. Um. But yeah, there's the the Saint Lotus Discord. Um, and which has become a pretty good hub for just VRDs across you know the U.S. Absolutely, so, and, and hyphenated comes in and yep, yeah. So Viashino, obviously true to the name, ended up drafting Mox Ruby, Strip Mine Wasteland, Lightning Bolt right. <laughs> were their top four picks. And, and uh, yeah, I think Lightning Bolt's probably high there, but as we've often joked it's, that the red deck it's is, sending a signal. Right, the red deck sign is you take Ruby, then you take a bunch of lands to make people upset that they can't get their lands, mm -hmm. and then you you know go from there. Um, yeah. I mean that red deck looks solid. It is, yeah. Well, we're not gonna not right. gonna spoil beyond that point, but right. it is a it's a pretty exciting. But time. again, this card there, right? And again, I hadn't even thought about the storm because again, storm is just something that I have mm -hmm. rarely ever played. Um, I don't like it in the red deck actually, but I do. I mean, the rest of it, I'm with you. So, okay. uh, so all right, let's go to school. All right. Um, so let's go to school. We're gonna start off with well, one of the professors here, or one of the <laughs> older dragons, I guess. Uh, so this guy has been shaking up um, formats. It's seen a lot of, of problems in historic, and then has been actually started seeing some play in modern as well from there, and maybe even legacy. I'm not 100 percent sure on that. Mm, interesting. Um, but definitely in modern uh, as a way to free cast time warps. Mm. Right. Uh, so the thing I'm thinking about here is like a sneak attack. Um, sure. So I'm thinking of the Kiki deck. And I'm thinking of a deck that's going to have maybe have sneak attack in it. This is a sneak attack target uh -huh. or a reanimator target is absolutely disgusting uh, because it's got haste. The haste is the big part there. Yeah. Right. The haste is the big part. And then it gets to look at your top seven and cast an instant or sorcery uh -huh. um, that costs five or less. So it's going to get to remove a creature. It's going to get to make them discard something. It's going to make them reanimate another creature. Um, you, know. you know this card reminds me of this card kind of reminds me of uh, the Shieldred effect, where Shieldred actually requires you to have it have her stay in play for an entire turn before right. you get the effect. But it's the reanimate a creature that will reanimate another creature for me, and Velamakas kind of does it all in one turn. And right. it's not as guaranteed, but if you have two creatures in your graveyard, you play Velamakas, you crash in casting Reanimate or something, right. and all of a sudden now you have two of them and play a makeshift mannequin. Like you kind of just play the oh, makeshift the mannequin. instant, instant my language cards. <laughs> yeah. I love but, makeshift but it really does so feel like kind of that same energy. Yeah, I mean, I think this is a sneak attack or animator target. It's absolutely disgusting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm going to get a cast burn to the face. Maybe I'm going to get a cast of time warp and get to do it again. Sure. Um, you know, so I I think this here, it's the haste puts it over the edge where it's too good not to um, see stuff. That makes sense. Yeah, no, I, I this one seems, I would be surprised if at no point over the next two years we see this card. Right. Uh, the next one is, I think most people would, I would consider this normally in most formats the worst of the commands, probably. I agree with that. Um, but I think here it offers some interesting things, and that's Wither Bloom Command. Okay. Uh, and this has so many words on it. Man. It does. It, all cards do, right? So the thing is, is so let's, let's go for a couple phases here, right? Like, this is a format that has a lot of X and 1 creatures, mm -hmm. kind of like Legacy. It's yep. a heavy X and 1 format. So this can kill those X and 1s, right? So it can kill a Bob, for things like that. Uh, kill a Snapcaster. There's also a lot of cheap artifacts and enchantments that dominate the format. So this could, I can kill your Bob and kill your Mox on turn two. That is really strong. Yeah. Right. Um, and then it also has that thing. If I am, I actually use it a lot in uh, Arena uh, Arena Cube to just get an extra land drop. 
Yeah. Right. Uh, so I just mill three, grab one of my lands. Mm -hmm. So it can do that for you, or if you're running in a reanimator shell, it, you know, might hit a creature on top of that. It's pretty hard for this not to be a two for one in this format. Like, yeah, I think I, other that's formats, it's in this format, this is like almost a guaranteed two for one. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I think that that's really, really strong. Being a sorcery hurts it a lot. It does. But it beyond does. that, no, like uh, this, I don't know what deck wants this. Like, there's there needs to be kind of a green black fair deck. Right. Uh, but if, if that deck there's always comes a rock. together, there's always some kind of rockish. You know, discard with a little bit of reanimator. I mean, sure. there is a lot in ours. I don't know, not across all VRDs, but in ours, there's all, there always seems to be something that's a little bit rockish. Um, yeah, I, can I would have that. drafted this in my bad um, devoted druid Yogmoth combo. Mm -hmm. And the, why that deck was bad is that each combo required too many pieces. It right. wasn't two card combos; it was three card combos, right? But uh, like if, if VRD won when I drafted the uh, the kind of it was, ended up being Jund, but it should have just been green black, mm -hmm. like the Chains of Me Mephistopheles deck. Mm -hmm. uh, this is pretty strong. This in kills that. chains. It does kill chains, but <laughs> I don't think I don't think uh, you're gonna be killing your own in that one, right? But yeah, I, the fact that this is almost always a two for one. Yeah, it, it was in a Liliana deck, right? So this right. in some kind of green black Liliana deck. I yep. like it. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I'm on board. Uh, the next one is Fracture. Oh, man, they really use those one, those words, one, hey, we have a new follower. Thanks for following. Uh, Ironclaw Orc. I saw you also followed us on Twitter. Nice of you to come hang out today. Thank you, thank you. Uh, so the, this, I think, I don't know if this is for every VRD, right? But ours is often, in, historically, over the last, since, uh, especially since I came in mm -hmm. and kind of shook things, uh, actually since War of the Spark, but not me. But I, <laughs> so in my first VRD, I, I made a statement, and I drafted Lotus, and then I drafted... Narset second. I had first pick, mm -hmm. so I had drafted Lotus first. It wheeled, and I went back to back Narset and Karn, and I got made fun of. And now Narset and Karn go in those spots regularly, and I will always, I always like I did it first. Rah, rah, rah. Yeah, War of Spark <laughs> pushed Planeswalkers like right. nothing else. Uh, but we're a very heavy Planeswalker format, I think, compared to others. I, I don't think that's true anymore. I think, think I, I think everyone else is caught up at okay. this point. Okay, well there you go. Yeah. Um. So this adds that versatility, right? Like, you know, Disenchant's not great, but I've seen it drafted. Mm -hmm. Right, so this is a disenchant that can also hit walkers. Yeah, you kind of need a you need a you need a deck that is like an Esper deck, right? right. It, needs, it needs to be both heavy white and black. Uh, Dead Man L, right? Maybe Dead Man, De Dead Man L doesn't really want to run more uh, more non creatures though. True. True. I don't know. I could see it. I, yeah. Certainly under the sideboard, Again, I can definitely see it. Removal is such a hard thing to, to slot in. Yeah. This is good removal. There's just so much of it. It is. It, it, you, if you're in the colors, sure. But again, removal is one of those things that's going to drafting removal in VRD is going to be very much going to be reactionary, mm -hmm. other than like the highest, is highest in like swords, right? Um, this is also nice. Cause it does fill a sideboard slot, so that there's no way this won't get drafted. I just don't know how often it'll get played. Is right. really what I'm saying. Yeah, but dread removal is one of those things that like I'm never, I'm always going to look <laughs> at what they're doing, and then I'm going to pick my removal after that, mm -hmm. other than the highest end removal. So. Totally true. And it does take out Fast Bond, probably a little late by the time you get it to play it. It is, yes. I've already take lost fast once Fast Bond was all. That's I mean, true. Come on. That's, yeah. Well, if you get Zuran Orb, you can take out a Zuran Orb with us. Oh, that's, that's, so, the, yeah, that's the key. Yeah. In response to them trying to play, in response to them doing something. Yeah, uh -huh. so it's even better. <laughs> all right. So this next one uh, actually repeats a combo we've seen before. Yeah. So this is a two card. This can be either and probably both, to be honest. Um, yes. And this is a combo we saw once, and we laughed at the combo, but I lost to it once. <laughs> uh, it, that That is a good combo, uh, and, and I think the deck around it ended up not working out as well as it should have, but the, the combo right. itself is as good as Splinter Twin. Right, so the combo, if you don't know, uh, the one we saw was off of Rao Zarek from War of the Spark, right? Uh, whichever one he is. <laughs> not that one. Nope. <laughs> uh, is it Rao Storm's Conduit or something? Yeah. Stormy. Storm. I know it has the word storm in it and doesn't actually have storm, which makes me upset every time. Right. So, uh, there we go. Yeah. So, Ral Storm Conduit is whenever you cast or copy an instant or sorcery, he does one damage to target opponent or a planeswalker. Mm -hmm. So, what you do. Operative word being copy. Right. Or, ca or cast on this one. Or, this, or could both. So, yeah. So, what you do then is you ca cast Chain of Smog mm -hmm. and. You target pull up chain of smog yourself. So the chain spells, of course, are normally known for our chain light. I, I can target you, and then you can target me back. But you mm -hmm. target yourself a chain of smog, discarding two cards. You don't care about the cards because you're about to win, right? Yeah. And then you now you get to choose to copy it, and you copy it again. You discard two cards. I have zero cards in hand now, but I still keep targeting myself, and then I kill them with Ral Zarek. And the tricky thing there is that you had to play three colors. It was really fragile. There was only one card on each side of the format. It was a planeswalker format. that was rather mediocre and cost four. Yeah, really yeah. unplayable beyond right. beyond that one ability. Right. But now that we have now that we have Witherbloom Apprentice, right. uh, a two drop, 
a two drop already in the same color. Right. And it's not a traditional storm deck, so you don't have to worry about like coming in there with your red and you you already get all the green benefits, like right. green and black benefits. Uh you get and... good removal like Wither Bloom come in. <laughs> exactly. Right. <laughs> Uh, you, you don't have to fight everybody to get the cards you, cards and fixing you need, mm-hmm. and your f- cards and fixing are way easier because you're only in two colors. And then you also get the extra of a pretty handy walker, right, uh, who does the same thing mm-hmm. in Professor Onyx, uh, who lets you draw cards uh, or can make people sacrifice creatures. So she, she's probably she, – outside of her Magecraft ability, I don't – she's not a walker that would get drafted, right? She costs six. Yeah. Um, her abilities are good but not, like, game-changing. It's um, a six-mana planeswalker. Yeah. But in that deck, again, I you know, mm-hmm. I could very you know, I could I would draft her. I draft both, use her, have the versatility, get Chain of Smog out. <laughs> yeah, the real question is, do you also are, so there's no replacement for Chain of Smog, right? So you're kind of right. forced into that one. Um, this this theoretical deck probably needs to get like demonic tutor really high, mm-hmm. uh, for, like go for all the tutor package, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like vamp demonic, and then you just like sidle on over to green and grab the other cards at the end. Yeah. It seems seems pretty strong to me. Right. I think it's legit. Uh, so then the next card is just a nice tempo play on a good body. Um, it is, of course, a championship card. So this was hey. PVD. Yep. Right. Uh, you know, this card is not amazing. It's not broken. Um, but it's a great tempo play. Mm-hmm. It's going to take a spell and then let them cast it a little bit later. Um, or make it more expensive where it's going to slow their combo, you know, by a couple turns maybe. Because now they have to have two extra mana. Uh, but it's on a 3-1 flyer. I'm going to keep talking about him, but John Ryan's going to take this card, and yeah. he's going to kill people with it, and it'll yeah. be great. So, yeah. I, I don't know what other deck will want it. Maybe a Pakula tile deck. You want to throw some white in there? Yeah, It maybe. could work. But Yeah. Yeah. So Next one is just a super... I don't know if this guy here... I, I don't I don't, I don't know about so. this. This guy makes a lot of... Gets a lot of talk in Commander Circles. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a very powerful effect. Um, but... It costs it, five mana. Does it say you win the game on it? Okay, here's the thing about this card that makes it interesting. I think this is really... I think really why I put it on there so I could say this and give some insight to VRD. If this was an artifact, this sees play. Yes, 100%, right? right? There's it's factory. colorless, but not an artifact. Yeah, there's no workshop potential right. here. Exactly. So this is that very interesting thing about VRD and how this card lies to me because I always think it's an artifact. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I can't do that. Never mind. Uh, is that, yeah, if this was an artifact, I think this card windmill slams into the Lodestone Golem artifact deck. Agreed. Um, this is not an artifact, so it won't see play. And that's a really interesting tell. Even at the same cost. Even at five as an artifact, this sees play. The backside's just horrible. What about this nice backside? Yeah, that, that, I don't think I've ever seen anyone cast that. I don't even know what that backside is. See, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna buying this card and I'm putting it flipped over only with the backside into Feldegriff and nothing else it'll never see the front side you, only the backside you, you do you man yep <laughs> Gr- group hug desperately yeah. needs this card alright and that's it, um, that's it so your big school. movers and shakers from Innistrad are the possibility of the Chain of Smog combo making uh, a bigger shake mm-hmm. uh, Velomachus Lorehold as being a really potent reanimator target uh, so, or sneak attack target Elite Spellbinder really fit flinching into the white deck and then just some good value that may or may not see play. Yep. I think that's pretty spot on. So the last the last set's a big end. Oh, yeah. And some of these are just, are, are, are just reaches. But I think that, that shows like the power of these cards, right? Sure. Um, the first, of course, is the pitch cycle. We're just going to put all five together. You know, it's a cycle. Um, grief and Solitude, the black and the white one, which, so Solitude is, uh, Grief is a better Thought Seize. And uh, then... Wait, wait. Grief, grief is Unmask, isn't it? Or it's odds on that, sorry. Yeah. It's even, yeah. Yeah, so, so grief, uh, some of these I feel like we do have to actually talk through, right? Because right. grief... Yeah, these two we need to talk through. Grief is obviously incredible, right? right. So it's uh, it's not strictly better, but it's probably better than Unmask. Mm-hmm. Um, it it allows for you to... And Unmask is seen play, to be clear. Uh, it right. sees play in the black discard decks. It sees play as a sideboard card for fair black decks. Right. Um, just to stop the disruptive cards from other people. Um, Grief is abusable in ways that Unmask is not. True. Right? So you can blink it, you can reanimate it. I can pitch a card, pitch a card, evoke Grief, and then immediately reanimate Grief to mm-hmm. take two of your cards. I expect to see none of those shenanigans, but still oh, see I this card to. see very good. I expect to see those shenanigans. Maybe. Yeah, I, I hope so. That'd be very cool. Um, and then Solitude is the Swords to Poshers of Okay. Yeah, pitch swords seems great. Pitch swords on a on a three two flash lifelink body that you may be casting at some point for just 
you know, that effect. Mm -hmm. uh, the other three, I think, are actually all playable. Um, Endurance has actually... I, I, so Endurance was an interesting one. It was one of those cards that I um, didn't like when it first got spoiled, and then I saw a lot of other people talking about it in a better way, and then I started looking at it more. Uh, it's, you know, crept up there in value. Um, it is pitch graveyard removal, right? And so... So it does have flash. Yes. That's that's. At first, I was reading this. I'm just like, this card is terrible. You are awful. But no, the fact that it has flash, I think, makes it okay. I, all of them have flash, right? Is that true? Did I just completely miss that? I guess they're all they're all mirroring. Yeah. Grief does not. Grief does not. Because grief, grief mirrors right. unmask, which does not have right. flash. Right. Also, they really don't like doing instant speed discard. <laughs> discard. Oh god, yeah. Grief would be. <laughs> yes. Uh, with flash, but yeah, it has flash. Uh, it's a solid body. Three, four reach. Yeah. Um, it stops like fast as Oracle shenanigans. Okay. Okay. Right. So this is why like, I'm running it in some commander slots because it's really good at stopping fast as Oracle shenanigans. It is counterable, but it's a creature, so it's a lot harder to counter. Right. Yeah. I, I can, I'm getting on board with this. Yeah. As again, I, I, I think the first two are locks. Yes. I think the th blue one is a p close to lock. Okay. Endurance, I, I do think this, this one will probably see play yeah. probably out of the board, and it'll probably come in in one or two matchups. Yeah. Uh, subtlety is the blue one. Let's see if we can spell subtlety. That's always the magic. Yeah. Okay. And so it does have flash. So the thing about subtlety is that they get to choose whether it goes to the top or bottom, mm -hmm. right? So they can, you know, unless it's a bad spell, they're probably going to put it back on top. So you're not, all you're doing is it's, it's a tempo play. Sure. But it's a powerful tempo play. You it know? only and hits I mean, walkers and creatures. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, no, yeah, that's the downside for this mm -hmm. is only walkers and creatures. Uh, it doesn't hit everything. But, you know, I, I think it's a good enough tempo um, that another free counter spell of some type is just free counters. Is not it going to get there, right? Yeah, uh, it, it's not a free counter spell when you want it to be a free counter spell, but right. it'll still probably see play, right? right? So this, I, we've seen foil. This is probably going to see yeah, play. Grief and Solitude for sure. Subtly yep. Endurance are probably. Yes. Fury is a maybe. And. Again, this is this what I'm talking about. Like, I think mono red has maybe be here, right? And it might get here finally. So this one doesn't have flash as well. That, that, that's good to know. Because it's, it's pyrotechnics, which right. doesn't have flash. Right. So it's the old pyrotechnics. Four just divided as many between creatures or planeswalkers. No, no, not to the face, which makes it a little worse. Yep. Uh, but again, in Diamond Burn, like a free destroy creatures. Free, you know. So again, it's a, just a maybe. It's not as bad as everyone makes it out to be, but it's easily the worst of the cycle. Yes, I agree with both of those things. I also think there's no chance that he's play. Okay. But yeah, the, the the first two. Is your is your mono red? You don't draft this? No, no. Because I don't care about removing creatures. I care about casting lightning bolts. But how many? Okay, are you, so you're just going mono. If you're going mono red, you're you're not going to creature mono red. You're just going straight burn to the face. I think you play goblin guy because it gets in for four damage before they get their creature down, and then you accept the fact that it will never hit again. I think that red creatures are so good right now that that changes the game. Fair right? enough. So, yeah. and we're going to talk about two, the two of the new ones here at MH two. And then we, I get to bring up one that I talked about last year or two years ago. I also like, just I don't know if red has the extra card sitting around, right? Because you're not just throwing there's away. There's the real answer, right? Yeah. There's the real possibility. And that is you know that is the probably the smartest question about it. Um, so it is the least likely of them to see play. Mm -hmm. uh, if it is, it, I'm never going to question free spells getting drafted. Uh, yeah, spot on. I agree with that. Like, I'm not going to say no chance, but I think it would be very unlikely. Yeah. But yeah, Endurance, I, I think Endurance is actually up there with Grief and Solitude as okay. very, very likely. Okay, that um, makes sense. Just because, like, sideboard potential, sideboard slots are always available. Yeah. And especially new cards tend to find their way in. So. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, so let's hear about the next one. All right, Aether Sworn Sphinx is a big Cascade guy that I get a cast for cheaper because mm -hmm. I have lots of little artifacts. <laughs> but I still get a Cascade into whatever I want in my deck, basically, you know, or whatever the first thing I hit is. Sure. Um, so, yeah, this is a big 4-4 flyer that I'm going to get to cast on the cheap, most likely, and is going to Cascade. I don't think this is a hard lock. I mean, but if you're in that blue-white artifact deck already, um, two spells for the price is pretty good. Uh, it, I, I think it's a good, really a question of how cheap do you expect to be able to get it. Right. Right. If you can relatively get this down to three all the time, then this seems really, really good. I agree with that. If you're casting this at four or five, even two spells for that cost is probably not good enough in the format. I don't know. I don't think this card's going to see play. Here's why. I think that the deck that would want it needs to go tokens. So you need to like get a battle sphere or something into play first. Mm -hmm. uh, if you're doing it fairly, you're like casting talismans and things. And at that point, you can just cast your big spells. And why are you casting this thing? Right. Um, so 
a deck that both is going wide with tokens or some other weird shenanigans, wants this card, and doesn't play counter spells, mm -hmm. feels very unlikely to me. Because yeah. if, if you cascade into a counter spell, it's the ultimate feel bad. Right. Um, I, it's a cool card. Right. I would love for this card to see play, and I want to see someone make it happen, but I just I, I can't find the confluence of those decks that end up making this card happen. Right. So. Yeah, and I think that's very similar I, uh, to the thought I have, right? Is how low can you get that cost, for, you know, and still make your deck good? Mm hmm and you know if you're doing artifact tokens okay maybe but maybe are, are you already winning by that point if you're getting it down to two if i have seven artifacts out you know right like maybe there's a workshop deck that somehow gets white and blue as well i, I don't know i just can't, I can't figure out how this happens it's just, it's all... um so the next the next two cards that you have here we're going to start with the one that i think has incredibly low chance of seeing play mm -hmm. uh and then we'll go to the one that might actually see play so this card i mean it lowers the cost of of storm cards mm -hmm. So uh, <laughs> I don't see it seen play in a fair deck ever, right? The uh, the other the blue red one has seen play, right? Uh, the blue red one may have seen play. I'm actually not even sure of that. Okay, I, I was banking on the idea that the blue red one has seen play. Um, uh, Brawl certainly has. Right, Brawl. Uh, the Brawl does. I don't know if Electromancer has. Storm is traditionally just like really hard to pull off in this format. It is. It's tough. You know, uh, and a lot of times, at least here, when people try to draft Storm, they end up going some Storm hybrid thing that just ends up being a train wreck. That's just, yeah, that's um, a problem. But I put this card with another card. <laughs> yeah, and the other card I think actually does have a good chance. Right. Um, so I do think that what why Arachomancer is a possibility is mm -hmm. because I think Storm gets opened up a little bit. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be Blue-Red Storm. It can be like a Green-Red Storm and go have both um, Empty the Warrens and Shatter Storm sure. as your outlets. And in that, uh, an Archimancer may be, may be worth it. I don't know. Um, so, yeah, Storm's decks, again, hard to draft, but a green-red one takes you off of the competition. Part of the problem, I think, is Storm, Storm decks are hard to draft is that you're always in competition for the blue pieces you want. Mm -hmm. The trouble is the blue pieces are also all the enablers. They're the cards, they're the fixing, or like the sorting to find the cards you want, and they're also the, the free spells that actually let you blow up in one turn. So, I don't know. I, I can see it. I think if you're, I think if you're going to see that deck, you're going to see it going to Dragon Storm instead of Chatter Storm. But mm -hmm. it's possible. Right. Well, I mean, you still get a Chatter Storm in there. I mean, one Chatter Storm in there. Why not yeah, grab? yeah, sure. That's fair. Um, of course, I mean, the issue is, I think the issue with Storm decks also is that, and and, and maybe you end up in Teamer, which is even scarier, right? Is that you don't have the four ofs. I mean, that's the right. thing. You just don't have like I was getting ready to say. Well, Green Red gets Metamorphose. No, Green Red gets one Metamorphose. Exactly right. <laughs> you know, and that just doesn't. Uh, so yeah, uh, those are you know some cards that I you know maybe yeah I, I can see it. Um, so yeah, we should we should probably blaze through some of these. I know there's yeah, a yeah, lot more cards, these, yeah. but let's uh, let's keep. And going. some of these are just you know whatever. Uh, this one, Mold Drifter seen play. I'm pretty sure Elaine draft Elite Guardsman or whatever the other flying one is yeah. at one point. Uh, I don't think our clue two clues as good as drawing two. No, not at all. Not at all. Um, so. I don't know. Nope, this card's not seen play. There we go. <laughs> uh, next one, though. Next one, though, is seen play. Yes. Part of Raya, Raya. So this is, so there was an amazing post going around that talks about the Ragavan to Monkey Index, which is how many Ragavans does it take you to buy an actual monkey at this point? Because Ragavans are like seventy dollars. So it's like, uh, wow. you know, like foil Ragavans. It had one for each type of Ragavan mm -hmm. you could get, and it was like, this is how many Ragavans you would have to have to actually get an actual macaque. I love it. Right? I love it. Um, so Ragavan is this super aggressive card uh, that it, it, when it deals damage, you get a treasure, great, and also you get to exile the top card of the library, and you can cast that card. You don't get to still lands with it. Um, it is. I noticed it yesterday. I searched recent vintage results. Mm -hmm. uh, it is seen play in vintage. Yeah, no, I believe uh, that. Third place deck uh, had it right. It was seen play in legacy. Uh, it is seen play all over. Right. So. Uh, so there's been a correction from a text message, uh, okay. not in chat, but Thurston points out that it's a marmoset is how many you can buy, okay. not a monkey. Okay. So it's uh, well, very thank important you. correction. Thank you. Thurston. Yeah, Ragavan, <laughs> Ragavan's going to see play, Mono Red's going to see play. I don't know if it'll see play in our first draft. Right. Uh, this is the, kind of the cube problem of we just don't know if well, is somebody going to want to draft well, Let's go ahead deck. and jump ahead to the other card then, okay. uh, which is Dragon... Scroll down. What is this card even called? Dra oh, Dragon's, Dragon's Rage. Rage Channeler, right? This is actually the Ragavan was not in the vintage list. Sorry, this was the one that was in the third place vintage list. Okay. 
Um, so four of these were the third place in the Vintage Challenge this week. They're seen play in every format. Um, a Red X aggro with uh, Channeler, Arcanist, Ragavan, and my old failed card that I predicted to be drafted, Robber of the Rich. <laughs> Robber of the Rich. <laughs> so bad. I, I, it's coming, baby. That it's card coming. probably won't see play. Yeah, it will when I draft it. Okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so this card uh, very quickly becomes this 3-3 flyer, and it also it gives you surveils as well. Right? Yep. So. Delver doesn't see play in this format. This card probably will. So yeah, this seems great. Okay. All right, so back up to our list here. Uh, Prismatic Ending. Is there anything before that? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah Let's talk about this one yeah, first. We'll go back yeah. up. All right, so again, this is a card that I d didn't make my radar initially, but is really rocking it in modern. Uh, it does a, a lot of interesting things. Uh, in that it's always a one, so you can generally mm -hmm. you could pick a different number and it can get around um, s uh, prelate. Sure, yes, yeah, right. yep. yeah. uh, I can Yeah, it can get around cards like it, you know, at one you can chalice for two and you know still cast this for whatever. Mm -hmm. It's very versatile removal and that can hit any non land permanent. Yeah, uh, it's it still got that same thing that we talked about for other removal, right? Um, the mana cost, but at a minimum in this format, like. Even at a white, it's a solitude, and I think or not solitude. Uh, swords, no, not swords. No, uh, the one that kills a one drop. It's a white one that kills a one drop. I don't remember. I don't think this card sees play, but yes, I, I know what card right. you're talking about. Uh, which sees sideboard play and vintage and stuff sure. like that. Uh, this 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 kills creatures. Right? It kills, yeah, it kills creatures. It kills everything. A lot of people play two cost or less. This will almost always kill a two drop. Right. It kills um, a mox. Kills a whatever artifact on turn one. Uh, takes out Zuran Orb. Yeah. So there are, uh, it's very, very versatile, solid removal. Yep. And uh, Exiles. I love it. I think it's great. Yep. This card seems very good. Uh, Let's talk about some more Reanimator. Yeah. A couple outside shotters. There's a lot, the problem with Reanimator targets is there's a ton of them. Yep. Uh, you know, I think that the earlier one, uh, Lorehold, I think is better than this. Yeah, it's Because kind of it's got haste. But this does kind of a half of a Cruel Tomatum when it comes in. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's you know, pretty sick. Um, so, but the issue, of course, with reanimator targets is there's just a plethora of them. So it's just really going to come down to what the pl what the drafter who's doing reanimator remembers. Yes. And you know, after the big like. ones, what they feel like. <laughs> yeah. Right? After Emrakul and the big ones, like what are they going to do? Uh, the next one's a super long shot. It's but this guy. I just want to say I just don't think we should underestimate this little guy. Um, Interesting. Any token. Right, so it, you have to be in something making token. But you create a treasure, you create a thing, you start getting squirrels. And the the fact why you don't underestimate him is he's removal. Uh, sure. Right. Like you make those squirrels off of any tokens. You have bitter blossom. You know, you get a fairy and a and a guy. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I don't necessarily for this. Yes, I'm not locking in. I'm not loading. It, I'm not even saying it, it's a maybe. Uh, but this is the type of card I think that someone drafts and then people go, oh wow, I didn't think about how versatile that that. Little I think right. that's spot on. I think yeah. at some point in the next three years, someone who likes squirrels will draft this card and it will be better than we think it will be. Yeah, and it will be people like, oh, well, correct. That's correct. that card's kind of yeah. crazy. I don't think it's good, but it, it'll somebody will like it and it'll be fine. Has Merfolk ever been drafted? I don't think so. There's, there aren't enough. That is not there. her. <laughs> that is not that card. She worships it, though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, Merf I don't think Merfolk has ever been drafted. There is Because there's not me. enough lords. Right, so you don't have the lore density that you'd get in a four in a in a four cards. At format. this point, you might to be honest. Fair enough. There's a lot of lords, and this is what kind of one of them, right? Um, she is indestructible as long as you control two others, which you almost always do. Mm -hmm. Your moral fork are harder to kill, and when she attacks you, to draw a card. I'd be interested in seeing someone write up a theoretical list for Merfolk and see what it looks like. Yeah. I, I don't think it'd be good though. Yeah, I don't necessarily think so, but. Uh... You know, if there is, she's there, and she would definitely be in it. Yeah, the that's next for card sure. is a load, load, load. Probably my surest shot. Ooh. Yeah, this, this card's card so dumb. So many words, it hurts. Like, right. and if you cut off any one of the abilities, it's still a good card. Yeah, like, like <laughs> in the day, not not in VRD, but in the day, three, two shadows for two were good. Yes. You know, uh, throw on a ley line of the void on top of that. If you made it a two, one shadow for two. Two, it would still be good. <laughs> yeah, throw a Leyland of the Void on top of that, you get great. Oh, and I get to cast one of those spells. Yeah, this it's just so silly. This yeah. this is obviously bonkers. Uh, is there anything more to say about it? Any in particular? No. Like every deck that's black will want it. So yeah. if there's more than one black, it'll probably go in the top fifteen. Leyland goes relatively early. Yeah, I mean a lot, a lot of the time, the top fifteen ish. So I expect it to go there. I think this is worse than Leyland. Why? Because turn one is a thing. Because you because you can yeah. 
I, I don't I don't know if that's actually true. I don't feel very confident. If you don't that turn zero it, it's not worse. Oh yeah, right. for I for mean, freaking yeah. sure. Right. But like the value of ley line is you just can't get screwed. Right. Um. I, I don't know. This, I this don't is know how many better. people are mulling into ley line in BRD. You're I mean, right. Yeah. This is probably better. This is really better. Um. But. I do think that if there are multiple black players at the table... Yeah, no, this is definitely better. And it will probably be in the top 15. I've changed okay. my mind completely, and you're right. Okay. A uh, couple quick hits here. Just, again, removal. Um, the next one, damn, this is versatile. Yep. And this is just a... Uh... Literally, damn. Hey, look, we... So, interesting, there was a discussion on Twitter last night mm -hmm. about whether, for, for EDH, if you have you have a black, black white X deck, whatever, yep. you have four sweepers, do you cut a sweeper for this, or do you cut a removal spell for this? And, the, and the, for EDH, the consensus was you run this as a sweeper yep, I that also removes. I agree. I think for here, it's the other way. I, for VRD, you're running this as removal that has the upside of sometimes becoming a sweeper. Mm -hmm. um, I'm probably only sideboarding this still, to be honest. But um, Yeah, I, I agree with that. I, I can imagine a format where there are enough people playing creature decks that you do want this. Yeah. But in a traditional VRD, I don't right. think you want it. Again. The, the issue with removal is you're often going to be reacting to what the other decks are doing. Yes. So, you know. But no, this this is fantastic. It will definitely be drafted. I just don't know where, wh which side of the deck right. it will be in. Uh, the next one will be drafted. Um, it will be drafted by <laughs> John Ryan. <laughs> nice. Uh, or somebody else, actually. This card's really good. Uh, I'm all in on this card in a lot of ways. I mean, it's not, it's only half a risk study because it only gets one spill. But it still just gets you, even if it gets you a card, like a card a turn. So is Modern Horizons just going to, like, swap out the bottom five picks of the VRD this time? Like, are we just going to, like, chop off the bottom section? Yeah, and just, <laughs> it seems yeah. like all these cards are playable. I, yeah. I don't understand what's going to happen. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I had to cut so many cards. I'm like, eh, that's an out. a lot of them were, like, total stretch playable. But, like, you know, it's just like, oh, but we don't have time to talk about all those. Uh, like, we're going to cut the one above, uh, below Esper Sentinel. Though it's a cool card. It's removal in blue. Fair enough. Um, uh, Ignoble Hierarch? Yep. Noble. Uh, the other one sees play. I, this one will see. I don't think Noble's never not been drafted. Um, you know, even if I'm not fully in the colors, uh, an exalted man of dark. And this card's not as good by any means, but it's still good. Why not? Because uh, it can't make blue. Oh, okay. it can't cast your blighted agent. There you go. Uh, yeah. So yeah, uh, obviously there, but it's still uh, an, a, an exalted man of dark, and it will see play. Yep. Uh, the next one, uh, I'm. It's been making the rounds and be doing very well for people in modern. Uh, I think I even saw it in a legacy list, uh, but I'm not 100 sure on that. I mean, this this isn't better than Batter Skull, right? Am I wrong on that? I don't know. Are you can't you? pick it up. Right, you can't pick it up. It's really bad. You can't pick it up. But it is hasty, trampoly, and indestructibly, right? I mean... Yeah. No, that's true. The creature has indestructible. So I, I missed that part. Yep. Yeah. No, it's better, really better. So yeah, yeah no, I mean, all, all they can... Batter Skull sees play all the time. It, they bounce, right? They, they bounce the token. Mm -hmm. Batter Skull's better. Or exile it. Yep. Yeah. Um, but yeah, this is legit. So if you're in that deck, um, maybe, but I don't know, Stoneforge packages, I don't even think, but our, Stone, our, our Stoneforge packages don't even normally run Batter Skull. They're normally getting either a sword or a Jeet or something like that, right? I think they always have Batter Skull okay. available. You think they, yeah, that makes sense. So I, I don't, yeah, I, I don't know if that's, an, it's, it's not as much of a go-to as it is in other formats, but it is always in the package. Okay. The next card is one that... Uh, we have a lot more to say about. So I, I thought that this originally I was thinking this is why this was a VRD lock. Mm -hmm. It probably still is. I just don't think it's necessarily VRD great. I don't think it's good. Um, you know, and uh, so interesting enough in modern the same thing, right? Like the early hype was people were talking about ban this this last week in the mocks. There wasn't a single one registered in the mocks in the top, whatever. Um, so if this sees play in VRD, it will see play. I just don't think it'll be good. Um, but if it's going to be good, I think that what you want to do with it is not is have a deck that's going to be able to get some kind of combo piece with it, like it, like a combo with Alter the Brood or something mm -hmm. like that, um, or some one drop combo piece. Brandon can only get so excited. Let's... I know. Look, I, I'm here to excite <laughs> Brandon. That's what I do. Um, because just getting like playing it and then maybe making a guy and then just getting a mana rock seems really feel bad. Yeah, I don't. I, I don't know what can break this, um, right. and I don't know, <laughs> as a fair card, it's not very good, and as a broken card, I don't see how it can happen. I don't know, this, yeah. I would be shocked if this sees play more than a, once. If you've got a combo that's got a one-mana artifact in it, or a zero-mana artifact, sure. a Zern Orb, right? I mean... But even in that case, do you want to wait three turns to pull it off? 
Yeah, but I can play this really good, man. I mean, you're not wait. You're, you're still getting mana, so the waiting's sure. not bad, right? Like actually, in Brandon's Zern Orb slash Tireless Tracker slash Fast Bond deck, Kubrick can replay this. This is actually good because it can get Zern Orb and Alter the Brood. But then you have to play all five of those other cards, and that's the real trouble with that deck. Yeah, but you're Brandon, so you're doing it anyway, <laughs> <laughs> right? So Brandon, this card's for you. Everyone else should probably actually stay away from it. Yep. I think it's pretty mediocre, and I think it's a trap. I agree. Um, this is a card that that both Eric and I would that, that is a card that both Eric and I would have competed over in VRD2. Yep. And then we would have been unhappy with it when we got it. Whoever got it would have been unhappy with it and said I shouldn't have ran it. That sounds right. This card seems great as a sideboard. Yeah, this is just a solid sideboard card. I mean, you know, it, it's funny they put this card in the same set as Doth is the Dothy Voidwalker. Yeah. Right? Who just like other than because it, it's Dothy's got shadow. It can't even you know it can't even block it or whatever. But uh yeah, other than that, like this Dothy smacks it around, but it's still solid. This card seems fine, but I don't I don't think it's even it's I don't think it's better than the other versions of it. What's the one that you gain a life whenever they cast one of those cards? It's the same idea. It's two mana uh it's it's from Mirrodin or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's several of them. So Core Firewalker is one, but the other the other one is one that... Uh, Oriok Champion. Yeah, I feel like Oriok... This feels like a worse version of the other two. Right. I think I think you bring them in against different decks, though. Oh, interesting. Okay. You think it's just against the fair decks? Yeah, like Oriok Champion, you're, like, you're, you're gaining life, you're slowing burn down, you're just gaining stronghold and blocking off. Like, the, the uh, you know, you're bringing Sense of Fire and Vec for the, uh, for the Graveyard Hate. Okay, sure. No, like, thanks, uh, outside of that, I mean, pro, uh, a 2-2 two -two pro red black, whatever. We've got Mirror Crusader for one more that I'd run every day, you know, stuff like that. But, like, you're, bringing, you're running that for the Graveyard Hate. Yep. Not, not for anything else. Uh, so, last thing, I think we're through all the things we want to hit on this list. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a few cards that I wouldn't be surprised with, like Merc Tide Regent. Yep. Um, you Dragon's know. Approach. Somebody's going to go all in. Right. I'm going to go all in on Dragon's Approach. Uh, and then there's some special mentions. Um, Dreadheart Arcanist can cast um, Obvious Betrayal and the No Mana Cycle, right? So, um, there are, there's a Warp World there. Um, okay. And there's uh, obvious betrayal is a bribery, right? So if if someone can find ways to abuse those, those could be really powerful. And um, cascading into them obviously is an option. Mm -hmm. uh, and the dread hard canist or our canist is obviously an option. So there are some interesting things that if someone does, I would be like, yeah. And they might finish in the middle of the pack. I, I don't think they're necessarily bonkers, but. Uh, uh, but there, it just shows like that that immense flexibility for DR, VRD. That yes. there's a lot of stuff that I just wouldn't like. If Merc Tide Regent gets drafted and beats me in the face, and I lose to it. I'm gonna be like, yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Uh, but it's not, I'm not even gonna pull it up, right? <laughs> so the last thing before we sign off, though, uh, is the announcement of the next Vintage History draft from St. Lotus. Oh, we have the official date. Uh, yes. Yeah, so well, we we have uh, we have the official weekend. Okay. It's gonna be the weekend of. July 31st, so keep that weekend free. Uh, we're yep. still figuring out exactly which day it is, very likely the 31st, yep. but uh, yeah, we, we have a date. Uh, the vaccinated Red History Draft is coming right up, yep. and we'll see exactly who's going to be there. So uh, excited to see everybody, and keep that date free in your calendar. But Absolutely. Thank you all for uh, watching, and if you got any questions, see us in the Discord. That's right, or on Twitter. Or on Twitter. <laughs> see ya. Thanks, everybody. Bye.